All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Healing Lifestyle Podcast. I am your host, Shonda Domingo Brown. And in this podcast, I'm bringing you everything healing while you are still living your day-to-day life, whether it's motherhood, entrepreneurship, lifestyle, well-being, family fun, fitness, <laughs> all the things. And so I'm super excited, y'all. I have my dear, dear, dear friend, Sarah Thibodeau, as our guest today. She is an amazing, amazing artist here in New Orleans. She is also a mom of twin boys, but she is true to this, not new to this, okay? Her babies are much older (laughs) than mine, Uh, but she is a mom. She's an entrepreneur. She is a woman on her own healing journey, connecting to her ancestors, working through her wounds and really honoring her intuition and embracing the path and trusting the path that spirit has laid out for her. So Sarah, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Shonda. I'm so excited to be on your podcast. I'm excited to have you. So today we're going to be getting into signs and synchronicities. And Sarah introduced me to this book. We were talking about angel numbers one day after one of our our, uh, sessions. And Sarah was like, there's, she said, we always trade books, y'all. So Sarah's like, in my tribe, we out here, okay? And we're always talking <laughs> to each other, like, books like, girl, did you read this? Girl, did you read it? No, you got to read this one. And so Sarah introduced me to this book called Signs and Synchronicities, and it is by Laura Lynn Jackson. And Sarah was sharing with me her journey of really connecting to her ancestors through signs through finding nails on the ground and through animals and through these feelings. And I was like, wait, what? Cause I had just been <laughs> doing like meditations, you know, and just sitting at my altar. And I was like, wait, continue. How are you doing? What, what's happening? Aww. And she was like, girl, read this book. And I was like, I read the book and I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Like I can find these things through music and butterflies and dragonflies, not just to always be healing, but just to get a nice little like nudge and encouragement and thinking of you. And I love you and you're on the right path and you're not alone and we're with you. And that I I can work with my ancestors and my guides and with spirit to really get those confirmations in another way outside of uh, meditation in another way outside of movement. So that's why I was like, girl, you got to come tell the people what you told me. <laughs> and so we're going to um, talk about signs and synchronicities today. So Sarah, I wanted you to just maybe start with how did signs and synchronicities show up? And maybe let's go a little bit backwards and talk about signs and synchronicities sure. and what are they, right? I know. I think just to back up a little bit, I came to you and I was so amazed and delighted by your gifts that you are able to, that I didn't know medium being a medium was real. And I didn't know. I just didn't know. I didn't know. And uh, I was like, wow, Shonda can really hear and communicate messages. And it's such an amazing gift. And I was sort of like, well, what, well, I can't do that. (laughs) But I love to open up. And I thought, well, what are different ways that I can open myself up since I don't have that particular spiritual gift. But um, and at the time I got to know you, I was going had gone through the death of both of my parents. And in a lot of ways, I got the sense that they weren't really gone. And I feel like there's a long story there, which isn't quite for right now, but it sort of opened up a world for me. And in some of the ways I started reading about spirituality and um, I read Laura Lynn Jackson's book. She has two wonderful books. Um, One of them is about her life that she has spiritual gifts like you, Shonda, and was working as a high school teacher and kind of knew a lot of things that she didn't have any way of explaining that she knew. And it's a wonderful read. 
But then Signs and Synchronicities was a wonderful book. Um, and in her book, she one of the things I loved was that she talked about her father's passing. And when he died, he lo- had loved Elvis Presley. And suddenly when he passed away, she couldn't like t- go anywhere without hearing an Elvis Presley song, without seeing a poster of him, without you know hearing a song in a taxi. I mean, it was always all on. And she was like, oh, feeling some love. And she had maybe not had the easiest relationship with him or different things. And I thought, wow, that is so powerful. (laughs) So when my, I have a couple of things. um, I mean, I was like, you know, a couple of times you hear a song and it comes out of nowhere and you're like, Oh, that's sweet. Like I know after my mom died, I was wrapping Christmas presents in my studio and I was just feeling like the Christmas feeling of just happiness. And all of a sudden I was playing the Amazon Christmas mix, which was like a lot of similar songs that we all know. And I played it a lot and I knew it had the same songs, but then all of a sudden it played this song, um, Moon River. And Moon River is an old song from the 1960s. And it was my parents' song. It was their song, like their, you know, wedding song or Mm -hmm. their, the story of their love, their song. And I was like, Moon River? You never hear that. Like, I haven't even heard it since. I couldn't say, like, one time. And I sort of was, like, flooded with that feeling of, of the family Christmas and love and support and I was like oh and I just kept uh, my siblings and I would trade different you know things that we would re- remind us of them but it just felt like a flood of them um, so when I read Laurel and Jackson's book she says you can make your own library of signs um, and so one of the things I did was I thought I'm always jittery about whether I'm kind of on the right path. I'm always like, am I making the right decision? Am I doing even the right things today? You know, like, or am I, am I going into my bad ideas? You know, like I can really, (laughs) you know, am I doing the wrong thing or leading myself Mm -hmm. into a big hole that I'm of self-created misery? Cause I've done that a few times in my life. So I thought, well, I made this, one of my spiritual signs that I made it myself was finding a nail on the street. And it was inspired by Hurricane Katrina because when I came back from Hurricane Katrina, there was so much debris in New Orleans that it was uh, easy to get a flat tire. And we all got a million flat tires in the year 2006. And so I felt like New Orleans having nails on the road was like such a metaphor for our city and how broken it sometimes has felt. And I remember cleaning the street like with a broom, like as though if I clean up all this debris, like if I can just clean up all this stuff in the road, then everything Mm -hmm. will be okay. And I remember feeling it like in retrospect being like you know I don't think one I can clean up all the debris in the road ever and two you can't control everything so I was kind of laughing at myself like as nail collect collecting all the nails in the street is kind of a ridiculous exercise but I started to see nails in the street like some people would see a penny and pick it up for good luck so I started the nails in the jar uh, and I put them in a glass jar for just like for just like a gesture of connection. And one of the ways um, I kind of I kind of lean on that sometimes and I go if I like, for example, I took a trip to Maine this summer and I felt a little extravagant and it felt a little like a reach like maybe I should be Mm -hmm, home mm -hmm. not spending money or maybe I shouldn't be reaching for my dream of happiness and I should just stay home in my lane stay inside Mm -hmm. do what I'm supposed to do and just not and one day but I got it all to work out and I flew on my points and I did 
things to make it affordable. And I painted this painting on the rocks in Maine. And it was like part of my dream as an artist. And I was in Maine and I'm in this beautiful unspoiled nature, right? It's rocks. It's like spruce forest. And the air is crisp and clear, like it's not urban. And I was like, you know, there aren't going to be any nails here. So I'm not even like going to go there. So I'm on this rocky coast and I'm painting this scene. And as I'm packing up, it's like the sun is about to go down. I'm packing up my gear. I had, I had kind of gotten myself into a little spot with rocks. Like I had to carry gear over these rocks to get to the coast. And so, but all of a sudden I'm packing my gear and I look down and I see like about eight nails all joined, like from a nail gun, like literally (laughs) in my spot, like in my, like at my feet. And I'm like, there are no, there's been nothing the whole time. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, thank you. I felt like a validation of like, this is your place. It's okay to be Mm -hmm. here. Uh, And that's been my struggle is to make sure that it's okay to make room for making my artwork in a world that maybe sometimes feels like I should be home. Like, I don't know, bouncing a checkbook or or not spending money on art supplies or, Mm -hmm. or, you know, some things that maybe feel frivolous, but maybe are really part of your spiritual path. So yeah. that's a little start to nails in the jar. I love it. I know. Um, so when Sarah's talking about nails in the jar too, she's always, I love it every time she does it. She's like, I was walking and I found some nails and there'll always be different <laughs> amounts and it'll always be right around the time we just finished having a conversation about something or she was just like not knowing what next step to take. And it may not be even an hour later. And she'd be walking down the street somewhere and it was like, <laughs> she'll and it's, you know it's for her because it would be a absolutely like disrespectful amount of nails. Like it would be like, yeah. I, in fact, not, one time I came to your on the girl. That's right. In fact, one yeah. time I came to your studio and I had a wonderful experience in the meditation and a really spiritual time. And I left your studio and I was about to ride my bike and I looked down and I counted. I mean, I, it was more than a hundred nails. It was a re- really large amount of nails in one spot. And I was like, okay, I think I'm getting the picture. <laughs> okay, things are happening. This is on my path. So to me, it feels like it means I'm on my path and mm-hmm. it means I'm supported. Um, yeah. And it is just a little wink, I guess, that I'm asked, like I both ask and receive a little wink of support. Um mm-hmm. And that's the nails in the jars part. And I do have a couple, I have one other story that came to mind about Mm -hmm. signs. And it was reminding me of like your story about hearing that song. Um, Oh yeah. I'll I'll tell it after you tell yours. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was thinking I had um, started to do some writing after my mom passed away. And that was really unusual for me because I had never really considered myself a writer. And, but I am the child of two writers and they wrote every day all the time. And I was, that was like a normal, normal book publishing Mm -hmm. and everything. And my dad was a book editor, but I wrote the book that I started to write sort of came through in a meditative kind of way where I felt like I got these essays and they sort of dropped through me and I thought, okay, this Mm. is important. And I wrote them down Mm. and I wrote them one at a time. So I wrote, uh, there were like 15 of them that came through. And so I put them together and I thought, well, now I have this book. What do I do with this book? And then I thought, well, I was like, well, I guess I should publish this book. And I kind of said out loud, And after that, I got, I would say, a torrent of images and signs from my dad, because my dad was a book editor for Macmillan Publishing in Manhattan um, in his, in the, in the 60s and 70s, and he was very active in the book industry. But after that, I got like, 
I mean, image after image. So like I had a dream. There was a book that he published in 1979. And uh, I have a copy of it. It's called End Time. And it was an anthology of uh, writings about the end of the world. And it's very him. It's like his whole sensibility, sense of humor, etc. But but it wasn't a book that was wildly, um, you know, n- nobody would have it. But I had a dream mm-hmm. that I went and had a meeting with somebody at an office. And they had a copy of my dad's book on their desk. This book from 1979. I remember in my dream, like, looking at the book, like, where'd you get that book? <laughs> and then I realized, there's that's my dad. And I would get, I got all these images of books and like he loved fountain pens and I would like open up a tray and there'd be all these fountain pens in it. And I was like, that's just like dad. I got like dad, 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 dad. And I felt like my dad was like giving me, like doing cartwheels for me about publishing the book. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it came in a big burst. So Mm -hmm. that was a sign, I guess, the other examples, I don't know, there were a few, because I never really get, I don't really get a lot from my dad in general, so it was like a big burst of yeah. that, and I felt like it was related to, I should publish the book that I wrote, mm-hmm. and, and I got to like, okay, I'm going to be okay with that, which is before I wasn't, and then I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I think I can be okay with that now. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that's the awesome part, right? So like when we're looking at signs, whether it's um, like after I read Laurel and Jackson's book and she was like, you know, you can just say out loud and speak to whoever you want to speak to, you know, like um, tell them what you want them to, to send you, you know? And I was like, okay, well, if it's my mom, if it's like my mom's my aunt's like my maternal ancestors send me an orange butterfly you know and if it's my paternal ancestors let's do a dragonfly like i just read it was like let's just give this a try and see what happens yes you know you can draw a map in her book yeah what the things are to give you actually like ways for them to give you the thing like a physical sign so oh okay yeah and i've learned to like (laughs) let it be be flexible with how it shows up too like Yes, sometimes I do see like physical orange butterflies and dragonflies past the car. But sometimes I remember I was walking into a meeting and I was like, man, I don't know if this is going to be a good partnership. I don't know how this is going to work. And I walked into the lady's office and I looked on her wall and there was literally an orange butterfly painting like <laughs> on her wall. And I was like, okay, I all right, here we go. You know, and I remember being nervous. I think I was dropping the boys off somewhere and I, I had to like leave, leave them. It was like some type of like camp or some kind of workshop. And I was like, should I stay? Like I do, you know how, you know, your mom yes. guilt and stuff starts kicking in and literally a dragonfly like hovered like right in front of us. And for me, it made me feel like, Oh, the ancestors got them. Like they're good. Yeah, they're protected. They're good. Like all is well. Um, and sometimes I remember someone wanted to have coffee with me and they were like, let's go meet at the Dragonfly Cafe. And I was like, of course, <laughs> of course, You're the like, Dragonfly Cafe. You're like, yes, yeah. I, I'm like, there. Yeah, I will meet you at the Dragonfly Cafe. Where is that address again? <laughs> and so I just think it's really cool. Like, even if you're, you know, you're not in a space in your life of you know, maybe you don't even want to talk. To, I don't want to. Maybe you don't even. You're not at that space yet where you're trying to embrace your whole ancestral lineage and all the things. But if you just have those like loved ones, you know, because um, both of my parents are deceased too. So like, I got specific with them. Like with my dad, right. I'm like, it got to be like Motown music. Like that was our thing, you know. Or with my mom, I know she really liked toast and coffee and waffles. So okay. it's like when they send me certain things like that, I know it's them specifically rather than maybe just not my lineage. That's right. But I really wanted people to know, like, you got options. Like you are never alone and you can really, really forge this um this language, you know, and sometimes it is angel numbers. Sometimes, and that's when when I see say synchronicities, right? Sometimes it is, you know, the same song playing over and over. Sometimes it is seeing 
three 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 or like right now it's nine fifty five, right? <laughs> like, you know, um, forty four. It's about really just opening up your your heart. I think to the the knowledge, the wisdom, and letting your imagination allow for you to feel like it's possible because it really is. It's real, right? But it takes Definitely. your heart to really have to be to be open to it. And I think it helps, you know, um, when you're raising a family and when you are, you know, an artist, an entrepreneur, um, it can be, you can have moments where it might feel daunting and it can feel pretty lonely when you feel like you just trying, you're getting through the, the sports schedule and the school obligations and, you know, did you check your QuickBooks and make some content? Did you actually create today? What's for dinner? Did you pack lunch? <laughs> oh, when yes, the whirlwind you know, of everything. Right. Yeah, and I and think, we, like, for me, just the yeah. notion of listening to your interior voice yes, yes. was new to me. I mean, yeah. I could always, I was kind of like, before that, I was like, I'm full of bad ideas. Like, I could drive myself straight to the bankruptcy court if I don't be careful with myself. So I better check in with all the authorities of how to be a grown up in life <laughs> before I do that. You know, before I get myself in a jam, I just didn't think my ideas were good. So the idea of trusting myself, my inner yes. voice was yes. Huge. And sometimes I feel like we walk through life with a lot of uncertainty. I mean, I walk yeah. through my days with a lot of uncertainty. Should I be working on this? Should I be working on that? Should I be helping my kids and my family? Should I be working on my own work? You know, what am I, you know, am I on the right, am I on the right path? It's kind of my mm -hmm. everyday question, which I want to be on. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I want to be on that. And I don't want to be driving to the bankruptcy court. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm like, okay, the inner voice really does guide you mm -hmm. where you need to be. And sometimes it's not where, where your idea of the rules and regulations of life are telling yeah. you. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's open up to things that you love, things that are creative, things that make yeah. you feel like a million bucks, you know, things. Because that, that is when we are in our intuition. That's when we what are we're supposed to be. That's, that's supposed to be our default to be. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And to me, I'm like, yes. I feel like I've given, before that, I'd given myself a really narrow scope mm -hmm. where I could be in that space. Like, if all my chores are done and all my, you know, if everything's good, then maybe I can do a little bit of creativity. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like my life sort of blew up a few times over the years and then I'm like okay <laughs> okay you know maybe maybe that's wrong maybe those rules and, and regulations are aren't a hundred percent what every person needs to do you know yeah. if you're creative and stuff so your inner voice does lead you your inner voice can guide you and you are supposed to feel joyful you are supposed mm -hmm. to feel joyful every day. You're yes. not supposed to live in stress and misery. So signs and synchronicities are to me like about how joyful life can be. You know, how delightful seeing something, being in the moment, being yeah. in your life, you know, appreciating the sky, the rain, nature, mm -hmm. just that you're doing the best you can and that you're not freaking out <laughs> yeah. so maybe in yeah. some ways it might seem like superstitious and maybe it is in certain regards but I do feel like sometimes you feel like it's a little uncanny like you're like how often do you hear the song x like really think about it what are the odds that mm -hmm. that would come on you know whatever at a certain time so mm -hmm. to me I'm like it's okay to go with it to go with that trust and yeah. and just allow yourself to experience your creativity and your joy and you might not know what the next step is but you can still live in that and and generally none of us know what's coming anyway so we should just yeah. 
keep living Roll in with the now. It. Go with the flow. Yeah, no, I think that was like an awesome way to like wrap it up and put it in a bow. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, they, the sign and sticker, I get giddy when I see them, you know, like I'm like, ah! I'd be like, hey, y'all. Like, it really helps um, shift my mood and I feel so um, supported. And so I just wanted, um, I wanted everyone to, to, I wanted to share you with everyone. <laughs> oh, I wanted, good, good. I, I feel wanted, like for me, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I feel like for me too, I, cre- I feel like it's uh, an abundance meditation that you can create for yourself too. Like I invented nails in a jar as my own. I tried to transform something that used to be a symbol for me of something really controlling and, Mm -hmm. you know, like little me trying to control the planet and everybody in it. And I instead I tried to transform it into a feeling of abundance. And so now I try to meditate on how much abundance there is. And when I, when I walk, you'll see me come back with like, a pocket full of nails because they are everywhere and because abundance is everywhere. So for me, I'm like, let's all create an abundance meditation, an abundance sign so that Mm -hmm. whether it's for you a penny or a dime and suddenly you'll see it everywhere and you'll realize how much abundance there is in life and in your life in in your path. And these are little trinkets to just show you that that's true. So to me, that was sort of another way to use the signs and synchronicities. Oh, I love that. I'm going to start looking for that too. I don't have an abundance one. Let's go. I I know. Like uh, my sister uses um, pennies. Like she goes for a run and Uh like there's some pennies on the. And suddenly I think if you, to me with the nails, it's like, I can't not not see them anymore. And I'm not looking, I'm not like scanning the road all the time. I'm really not. But it's mm-hmm. weird how suddenly my eye goes, zoop, and yep. there it is. And I'm like, yep. I'm not like looking with my head down, like like mm-hmm. I'm scanning the beach. Your energy one will gravitate towards you. Yes. But they just, they show up. And I feel like sometimes I'm, I feel like, well, oh, I turned on this street. And I'm like, oh, look. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's really weird and I could show you that I do have a lot of jars full of nails which I think maybe my husband thinks is weird but I feel like it's delightful and <laughs> they're full it's filled with uh I feel like it's a way to like give yourself the gift of abundance and then mm-hmm. to be recharged in it every day too yeah. so that's just something I I do now that I I feel like it gives me a sense of that everything will be okay <laughs> mm-hmm. there you go I think that's what it for me that's what it really is right it's that reminder um it helps you get you out of victim mode it helps you remember that your default setting literally is bliss and joy absolutely you know, I mean and there were times I had trouble getting off the floor like I've had depression mm-hmm. and I've had different things and I'm like if mm-hmm. you know there there are other ways to live there's there's different there's a lot of things going on and if we start to notice what's happening now yeah I feel like exactly. anybody listening they might get a sign or something if they just think maybe there might be one or ask for one exactly and then receive you ask for it, it, you go get it, it. <laughs> yes you receive it and yeah. if you receive you are allowed to receive all the joy and abundance that life is ready to bring to you Yes. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for having me, Shonda. I appreciate you. Let's talk for hours like this. No, we would. (laughs) No, we would. Because you know we sure will. We'll be like, let's go get some coffee. Good. (laughs) I can't wait to hear all the episodes of your podcast. I'm so excited. Yay. Well, thank you, Sarah, for joining us on the Healing Lifestyle Podcast. I will put links to Sarah's website if you want to check out her art. All right. If you want to follow her journey, she's always making these beautiful posts with these handwritten positive notes on her social media so you can stay connected with her and all the things. And until next time, y'all, keep healing. Keep going. You got this.